Hello everyone, and welcome once again to The Heir's Lair. I am your host, aspiring author Jonathan Taylor. I am back in my usual setup today. I want to see how, uh, how well it works. And I want to talk to you about the uh, history of the uh, Backstory Empire, or Norstead Empire. Before I uh, go into that, I first want to uh, show you something. Namely the map of the continent where my uh, story takes place. It was done by uh, Dewey Hargreaves. I'm gonna leave his deeds as well as my own in the description box below. I don't know why I've used this. I've never used that uh, description for it before. And I'll use it as a visual aid for uh, most of this video. Uh, regardless, let's uh, start with the history of the Norsen Empire. The history of the Norsen Empire actually starts with a rivalry between uh, these two kingdoms here, Nordan and Lysen. Lysen at the time, aside from the holdings on this uh, peninsula here, also had various uh, cities and territories alongside this uh, coastline here by this bay. And they decided to go on another war against uh, the Nordan Empire, another expansion, the expansion war. It's not, it's not the first one they've ever, that you have uh, had, they've feuded a lot in the past. Nordan sees, sees that uh, Lysen has a bunch of, uh, a bunch of, uh, small fiefdoms that are pissed off, uh, that are pissed off because of it. That are its uh, enemy and this, and so decides to visit first the uh, northernmost of them and ask them, hey, do you want an alliance with us? We can help you beat back the license. And they were like, okay, let's do it. And then there were some, uh, and, and then they married within the, uh, within various uh, northern uh, noble families and were integrated into the uh, northern kingdom, which slowly grew to uh, become an empire. It, col it did so first by colonizing Phrygia and then by establishing similar other alliances with various uh, and various other Dutch fiefdoms that lived further south and which wanted control over these uh, territories alongside the coast, along the coast of the uh, of, of this bay here. And once these, uh, once this empire uh, First gained, first gained some footing, it then started expanding into all of these, uh, into all of these uh, stand nations that uh, you see. Why didn't they go any further? Well, because after about uh, three to four hundred years, during which time the empire just kept on expanding, the uh, the empire itself, uh, the rulers of the uh, empire, the noble houses that. Uh, held all of the important positions, decided that they needed to be under uh, new management. And so they uh, plotted a major plot of a coup that led to a civil war, that led to the ousting of the uh, uh, reigning Starnik family, and, uh, and instead installed the uh, Bjaldheim dynasty to be, the, uh, to be their rulers. To be the leader, need to be their leaders and to uh, rule the places they've conquered instead of uh, conquering any further. In practice, that meant a lot of uh, a lot of riot suppression and a lot of uh, uh, fighting against uh, various rebellions. And after his uh, father and grandfather have been stuck in in all sorts of uh, in, in all sorts of these fights over the past uh, fifty years. Elfric Bjaldheim uh, suddenly decided, okay, this is this isn't really working. If we really want to uh, make a make a difference for the uh, people we uh, uh, for the people we rule over, uh, having our capital uh, here so far away from the rest of the empire doesn't really help. We need to move, relocate the capital. We need to put it somewhere where it's closer to uh, to the people. However, instead of uh, doing something that doing something logical and moving his capital on some side of this uh, mountain range here, Alfred decided to instead place his capital south of the mountain range in the province now referred to as Savingston. That uh, angered his uh, courtiers somewhat. So while they did uh, help him in, uh, well, they did help him in uh, moving the capital. Once the capital was once the capital was finally moved, they decided to just uh, pack up their things and uh, uh, leave the empire. And so seceded Nordan from the, uh, from the rest of the Nordan empire. Which I think is the ultimate example of screw you guys, I'm going home. 
Elfric uh, still decided, still wanted to keep his uh, courtiers uh, by his side, or rather under his rule, so uh, initiated several invasions of Nordan, but they were all they were all pushed back against. So nothing, he, so nothing he tried in that field was particularly successful. And to make matters worse, the license noticed that the uh, Nordan Empire was falling apart, and decided to. Uh, to invade, to launch a second expansion. Only this time they didn't mess with uh, the Kingdom of Nordan itself, they messed with the uh, surrounding territory of the uh, um, of the uh, Dudston province, which wasn't called Dudston province at the time, but you, you get the point. <clears throat> and while Elfric was somewhat effective at keeping them at bay, the, uh, uh, the attacks and the war only stopped once Nordan uh, Friend to intervene, and yeah, while that and while that did stop, uh, while that did stop the license and uh, bring forth peace, it really uh, weakened the uh, really weakened the uh, the uh, uh, the allure and the uh, strength of image that uh, Elfric and the rest of his uh, and the rest of his house held, and because of that. Uh, all the other nobles, pretty much uh, uh, from the uh, from the uh, former Nordan Empire, now known as the Norsten Empire, have uh, all collectively decided mm, to uh, distance themselves from him. They didn't depose him or his house, but they didn't want to. They didn't want to have any arranged marriages with that house or uh, or anything else like that. Then, uh, then after. And then during the reign of Elfric's uh, son, uh, a plague hit, and it hit the uh, crown lands particularly hard, the area, uh, the area that now makes up most of Sadenstan. And so, an, uh, and so an ambitious, uh, an ambitious new warrior house from uh, from from the what is now known as Dudston, the Brantners, led uh, led a rebellion or an uprising. Against the uh, uh, against the Bialdimes and took over as uh, took over as the imperial dynasty. As an uh, imperial dynasty, the Brantners are kind of a mixed bag throughout history, because while they did expand the uh, industrial and military capabilities of the uh, of the world, they and they also added some uh, uh, administrative uh, reforms. Namely, they created the the provinces that now become the countries you see on this map. And they were also kind of uh, very eager. They, they were very eager, very uh, willing to have uh, signs and demonstrations of fealty uh, surround them at all times. You could call them you could call them authoritarian if you'd like. The fact that there were uh, a bunch of plagues during their during the reigns of uh, Brenner emperors didn't really help much. Uh, didn't really help matters either, but they still had a lot of support from uh, from uh, other from other noble houses. Towards the uh, in, within the second half of the uh, of the Brenner's time as the imperial dynasty, however, they did receive some uh, form of uh, of a soft power competition from a noble house in uh, Gaston this place here, known as the Korondani. The Korondani were kind of an uh, unusual uh, uh, house in that they were the only, they were the only uh, sizable noble house that actually followed the monotheistic uh, faith of the continent. This, uh, this continent mostly follows uh, nature and uh, hero worship uh, religions with some polytheistic cults uh, surrounded about. So. The fact that this, uh, the fact that this uh, uh, piece cult exists is kind of a, is kind of a rarity, rarity, even though it is was pretty uh, widespread, particularly in the uh, south of the empire. And and uh, it was mostly a, it was mostly a poor man's religion. The fact that uh, the Korondani were, Korondani took it as as their own was, re was really strange. Like as I said, they were the only ones that really that followed that faith. 
aside from aside from that, they were also notable by by being excellent uh, administrators and uh, and justices. They were known as being kind. They were known as being fair. They were known as being uh, hardworking, and so started to get our friends as the Brantners started to uh, lose some of theirs. The tipping point was when a uh, Brandner prince decided to assassinate a diplomat okay, not assassinate, just straight up kill a diplomat from this uh, place here, called Ornese and, <clears throat> and at that point, uh, even the Corondani, who were somewhat supportive of the, uh, of the reign uh, were like, okay, this has gone on, has gone on long enough let's, uh, let's storm the capital, let's take the, let's take the Brandners down and after a pretty intense civil war, they did, uh, they did just that. They didn't uh, completely uh, eliminate or kill off the Branders, uh, really. They just uh, reduced a lot of their holdings to what they were before the Empire ever existed. However, they kept uh, their main uh, lieutenant house, the Stactons, uh, around, because the Stactons, had, as the Stactons decided to uh, switch allegiances uh, during the war. The, uh, the Korondani have a much better reputation as an, uh, as an imperial dynasty. They are known for, being, for improving uh, administration, administrative work in pre pretty much throughout the entire empire. They made uh, education much easier to access for everyone. They also instituted uh, large-scale uh, uh, emergency services that were more uh, easily accessible, readily available, what have you. However, um, late during their reign, a lot of their a lot of their uh, peers and a lot of the uh, uh, general public eventually found out that power corrupts, and power was uh, corrupting them. And it all started when uh, 250 years after the uh, after the uh, Korondani takeover. Uh, one particular uh, emperor called uh, Sebastian started to uh, restrict the rights of, uh, the rights of uh, general citizenry, particularly regarding uh, free speech and fair trials. The uh, prince of uh, Phrygia, or Frixton, as it was known at the time, uh, saw the writing on the wall and immediately <coughs> and, and immediately decided to. Uh, rebel against the empire. He wanted to keep his uh, his province, his principality, outside of it, outside of the uh, uh, outside of these affairs. He wanted to he wanted to be able to make his own make his own laws. He did have to fight a war over it, but eventually he but eventually he managed, and that led to uh, not just uh, not just Sebastian, but also his uh, son and uh, grandson to become. Uh, somewhat more paranoid and uh, institute increasingly uh, increasingly restrictive and increasingly regressive laws. Things that even his uh, things that even their forefathers would have thought things that their forefathers would not have even dared to think about. Eventually, <clears throat> eventually the tipping point I will say was when. Uh, the uh, last Korondani emperor started issuing uh, issued uh, a couple of laws that allowed certain privileges for those who followed the uh, the, the monotheistic faith, and as well as uh, as well as uh, allowing the legal legal discrimination of certain uh, gender, sexual, or uh, ethnic minorities. Uh, at which point the uh, heir of the uh, the heir of the Stacton uh, of the of the Stacton house, as well as some of his uh, peers, decided to uh, uh, collectively known as the Young Hawks, decided to rebel against the against the uh, uh, against the uh, imperial seat and their and no, and their and their fathers, and uh, and uh, wanted to. And started a civil war, aiming to uh, restore the Brantners as the uh, <clears throat> as the imperial dynasty. Uh, 
So yeah, they uh, uh, they went to war. They were initially somewhat successful. However, they however they, the battles were increasingly uh, bloody and increasingly brutal and increasingly uh, casualty heavy, to the point where well, to the point where even though in uh, even though in even though even though the general population had seen uh, had seen or had experienced war in the past, it was never like this. It was never uh, this bad. And then after about uh, after about a month of uh, not a month a year of this uh, war, uh, the Koronta, the Korondani were all killed. However, the uh, Young Hawk Rebellion didn't exactly have a decisive <clears throat> a decisive edge in the war. And that led to the uh, entire empire uh, coming apart at the seams, and every single, <clears throat> every single ideology that was, uh, that was kind of that was pretty much suppressed under the, uh, under the rule of the Korondani, man, uh, all uh, now all of a sudden uh, manifested as a manifested as a faction within this war, and they all made. Their uh, their territorial territorial claims. They all made various promises on uh, how they would rule. Pretty much all of them agreed that they wanted to be uh, to abolish any form of empire. Some of them even wanted to go full on isolationist. Most noteworthy of these factions is uh, one that started actually in uh, Western Galston, <clears throat> namely the uh, namely the Republican faction. And aside from the uh, aside from the other factions, they were also they they had the advantage of uh, of resources and of uh, and of a legislative organization, and which allowed them to be able to take over a large part of the uh, territory of Galston and then set up uh, various chapters in all of the other <clears throat> in all of the other provinces of the empire. And eventually, through uh, cooperate, through cooperation, and through the exchange of uh, uh, intelligence, supplies, and uh, manpower, <coughs> the uh, Republican faction uh, emerged victorious, supreme killed it, uh, killed, and finally abolished the empire, and instituted the five republics, the MCs and their uh, peers. Uh, know, love, and grew up under. So yeah, and yeah, that's the history of the empire, and this is how it rose, how it, uh, how it uh, thrived, how it decayed, and how it fell. I hope you enjoyed the story. If you if you did, then go ahead and uh, leave a like for it, you know, like to this video. If you have anything you'd like to add, the comment section is uh, widely available. And if you want to see when the next video comes out, then go ahead and subscribe. Maybe also ring the bell or do whatever else YouTube will require of you. Until next time, I am Jonathan Taylor, and this has been The Heir's Lair.